Good afternoon. Welcome to day two. We're going to get started in a minute and a half or so. So welcome in. Let us know where you're tuning in from and give us a share with a quilting friend of yours and we will get started shortly. today for day two and it's Tuesday and the girls are getting ready to jump in the car tomorrow we are tell them what we're doing tomorrow we are tomorrow Sarah and I will be traveling to Woodstock Illinois to sewing concepts and we are having the hoop sisters pop-up shop and it's kind of in conjunction with Sewing Concepts 35th anniversary of being in business. That so we're very amazing. excited for Linda and Dwayne. Linda is uh, my Hoop Sisters partner and also um, is the owner of Sewing Concepts. So we're excited to celebrate the 35th anniversary with them. So if you're in the Illinois area, um, check out where Sewing Concepts is in Woodstock on Woodstock yes. Square. And we will see you there. So we're very excited. There's something else going on today, too. Oh, Not yeah. tomorrow, but today. Yeah, what is it? Today is Sarah Comden's birthday. Aw. Happy, oh, happy birthday, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the pop-up shop, which is Hoop Sisters Visiting in Woodstock, Illinois, um, we've been shipping samples. They're getting ready to load the truck up. Yeah. Um, there's going to be some demos. You can hang out with Annie and Linda, the sisters. Mm -hmm. Sarah's bringing Mary. So if you like babies. Hey, you know what? <laughs> you like and you like babysitting. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, they're all going to be there. Um, lots of our samples. Um, we're actually taking the autumn garden with us. Right. Oh, wait. No, this oh. is not autumn garden. Oh, you just <laughs> opened the door, didn't you? She just... Uh, what That's is this? next time. This is some, something about some <laughs> You guys, we're coming out with so many new designs. I can't even keep we them straight, so forgive that. me. Yeah. This is our sunflower table. Sunflower table. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> getting ahead of myself. Yeah. So anyways, if you were not here yesterday, maybe you missed day one, drop a number five in the comments. If you were not here yesterday, if you consider yourself brand new to Hoop Sisters and you're still kind of learning and figuring it out, put a number one in the comments and we'll say hi to all of you. And this is the best time to learn how to do this is at our virtual workshops, right? It is. It so really is. it makes it so nice. Oh, look at these number fives. Perfect. So no worries. If you missed yesterday, we're going to recap pretty much what we talked about mm -hmm. yesterday. Um, and some of those names, I know you already know how to do this, some of those names. Um, but today, what are we going to do? Today, we are going to take the block that we made yesterday, and we're going to trim it, and then we're going to pin it to another block so you can see our pinning technique, and I'm going to show exactly where to sew, 
And then on the round table top, where we're going to show you how to do the lining on it. I'm not going to actually, I kind of partially did it, but I'm going to explain it because it's super easy and I know everybody can do it. Awesome. Okay. I got to say too. Looks like we froze for a second. Oh no. I bet they can hear us. I think I'm going to turn this off. Bear with us for a second so we can figure out if we're frozen or not. Okay, so I might try. All right, well, I think you guys, I'm going to go with the fact that you can hear us and that we're going to unfreeze <laughs> in just a second. But I will say it's so humid. I got no controls in my stream yard right now. So I can't click on anything. Nina said she can hear you, but you are frozen. Oh, okay, great. Okay, well, bear with us first. Okay, let me know. I'm going to check my mic. Okay, let me know. Yeah, your mic is good. Okay, so we're okay, I think. I still see you guys. Okay, well, woo, we fixed it. We're all still together. That's amazing. I think okay. we fixed it. So we're just going to hold our breath and cross our fingers and toes. Okay, so as I was saying, um, what I was about to say is I – can't believe I'm going to say this, honestly, because I love summer so much, but it has been so humid. It has. That you can't even enjoy outside here I in know. Ohio. Even and when it's like 80, you're like, oh, I know. I so when I saw this design, I was like, thank you. I can thank you, Donna. Um, so she can hear us. Everything looks like it's working. But when I saw this design, I actually am like, Okay, I'm ready. Just do fall. Let's go. Yeah, let's <laughs> and I can't that. believe it. I feel that way. I know that it's a this design is a good transition from late summer mm -hmm. to fall. I'll let you I'll talk a little bit while you pull up all your other good things that you usually have. Yeah. There. So, so <laughs> what I was gonna say too as we froze was that Nina is available. So if we go over something and you're like, wait a second, this isn't working for me, my cart isn't doing that, or I didn't get something. Just reach out to her. We'll do our best to answer you guys in the comments as well. Um, so, yes, humid in Indiana. It is. It's just like ugh, I can't, from the minute you wake up in the morning, too. So, OK, what I thought we could start with is showing you our little setup. It's super duper cute. I got to get the camera added back in since we lost connection there. So. Okay, I'm ready when you are, Sarah, and I'll make it big so you can see what's going on. Um, but we just got into, what, wrong one. We just got into this fall. I'm like, you know what? Let's set up a cute table because I'm ready. Bring on the fall. I even got a cute little pumpkin candle on there. I'm going to move this just for a minute because obviously we want to show off this incredible design as well. Um, but just look at the, the length of the table, too, and the shape of this one. This is the round with the triple layout, and it's just so beautiful. It is so cute. And Annie did, in this sample, she was saying yesterday, the light, medium, and dark. Yep. And if you don't want to mess with that, because I saw Teresa Huber, who is the... She is an honorary hoop sister. Yeah. There on this for, <laughs> I um, met her in Chicago years ago. Yep. And yep. so... On this sample that Annie stitched out yesterday, she just did them all the same. So you can really do whatever you'd like. 
Um, you can change your color. I probably moved that out That's of your, okay. the spot you had it in. But I just love that it's a set too. So you can see the, the free gift that came with registration. And then of course we had to put our pillow in here too. So you can do the pillow. Um, and this is the square layout, obviously, as you can see right here, this beautiful stitching, all the quilting is included. So when you do Hoop Sisters, you don't have to worry about how to quilt that later or if you got to know someone with a long arm or anything like that. So we just, you can make that square that pillow, that square pillow into a ta table yeah. topper too, right? Yes, yes. and Absolutely. so we have a small rectangle table that we put this on, um, and I do love, it's just kind of looked like the scallop, it looks like a scalloped edge, mm -hmm. uh, but you can do the square version in this and just keep going as well. So very, very cute, you can't get enough of that. Um, and then I also did want to, uh, let's do this. We'll get you all set up over there. Um, I also just wanted to take some time today to recap some of the things that we talked about yesterday as well. And we do have a new live giveaway keyword, which is the word PIN, P-I-N. So just go ahead and type that word into the comments. It will get you entered to win. In fact, we should also give a shout out to Deb Eckstein. Yeah. Who <laughs> won our giveaway yesterday and stopped into the All Ohio Shop Pop that we have open yeah. <laughs> um, today. So pretty fun. Okay. So quick recap before Annie gets into the part that I know you guys all want to see and just wanted to let you know, this design does come. Um, I see those pin comments co coming in. This design does come in five inch and seven inch block sizes. So if your machine can only do the five inch, you can still do this. Just do the smaller block. If you'd like it to be bigger, you could go up to the seven inch. It's also available in, we just showed you the square and the round and sort of single and triple, if you will. So here's the sizing information. Um, Annie, you want to talk about the sizing of Yes, this? absolutely. Um, it, it comes in round and square, but it also comes in two sizes. It comes in five inch and seven inch sizes. So you can see the column over on the left shows the round one. So you can do a single circle. You can do a triple circle. You can do a double or quadruple if you want to. Oh my. <laughs> you can just keep on going. But the five inch block size makes a round that is 17 inches in di 17 inches in diameter. The seven inch round is 25 inches in diameter. And if you did the five inch that was the triple round, you end up with 17 by 37. And the seven inch triple round will end up 25 by 52 and three quarters. Wow. And then over on the right hand side, you can see it lists the square option. So the square option, I won't read through all of those because I know all of you can see all that on your own. But the square options, the five inches, 19 and a half um, by 19 and a half and the 17 inches, 27 and a half by 27 and a half. I also saw this and I know that you know and I know. So let's answer Miss Marsha. Okay. Marsha asked, is the embroidering in the corners of a up on the corners, a part of the design. I think she's yet. talking about the pillow. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she's talking about the sunflower stitching that is on the corner of the pillow. And yes, that is part of the design. Everything that you see there, every stitch that's on there is part of the design. Pretty cool. Okay, so at this point, uh, why don't we turn it over to you and you All can right. do your little. Okay. Do your magic demo. All right. So today what we're going to talk about is how to use a trimmer by George and trim the block that we made. This is the block that we made yesterday. And then we're going to talk about pinning it to the next block next to it and how to sew the seam and all that. So let's get started and talk about the trimmer by George and how to trim using it. Um, first, let me tell you exactly what it is. It is an acrylic ruler. It has a sashing mark. For the, our designs that you put a sashing on the back, this particular one does not have that. And it also has a marking for binding. And of course, all the other good markings you need, the 45 degree, 60 degree, and all that. But what is unique about the Trimmer by George ruler 
is the metal edge on it with the crimped edge. You can see there's a little metal edge that's crimped right here. And this long edge here is gonna protect the fabric on the front while you trim the battleizer way up to the basting stitch. It helps to remove all the bulk from the seams, which is amazing. And on this particular design, all the edges, including the rounded edges, need to be trimmed right up to that basting stitch. Um, normally, if you have a quilt, if it's the edge of the quilt, you're going to trim through all the layers a quarter of an inch from the basting stitch. But we lined this. So when we line something, we're going to trim all the sides using the Trimmer by George. So here is our Trimmer by George metal edge. And I'm just going to lay the metal edge here on the battleizer and lift up my fabric and just slide that metal edge right up to the basting stitch and it stops when it gets there. And then I'm going to lay it down and I always give just a gentle tug and I also just do a visual to make sure there's no fabric peeking out. You will need to use a 60 millimeter rotary cutter with this because that metal edge does raise the ruler up a little bit but you're going to use your 60 millimeter rotary cutter and use that metal edge to trim against. So I'm just going to take it and go ahead and trim that. And since I'm going to do all the sides, I'm going to do a little rotate and I'm going to keep going around this entire block, pulling the fabric back and putting that metal edge right up to the basting stitch, giving it a gentle tug, tug to get it as close as possible and then just doing a visual to make sure no fabric's peeking out and then trim it away with the 60 millimeter rotary cutter. So I have one more short little side. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Ooh, good question. But it's great how it protects that metal edge. So Faye asked, can the trimmer by George be used for all the hoop sisters design? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> it's just an amazing tool. It's just amazing. So now what I have here, since this is the outside of a rounded one, we have a rounded edge here. And of course, our trimmer by George is not rounded. Right. It is straight. So I'm going to show you just how you could use the trimmer by George with that rounded edge. Because if you were to pick this up and take a scissors and try and cut this with the scissors, your chance of clipping that fabric is probably pretty high. And the same as if you were just to use a regular rotary cutter. You can try and get as close as you can, but chances are you will nick that fabric. So even on a curved edge, I like to find the middle of the curve and I just slide the trimmer by George in there and I give it, just do the same steps. Give it a gentle tug, a visual to make sure the fabric isn't peeking out and then trim that away. I think Sarah and change your blade. blade. We all need a new blade. Okay, we've been so trimming a lot. <laughs> I, we have been trimming a lot. We've been cutting some future fabric kits. So get ready. So you can see how it, you know, we trimmed it close here, but we still have a couple little spots there. So we're just going to keep going around until we get it as close to that as we can. And we get most of it trimmed off. Yeah, she needs a new blade. Oh my gosh. All the time, right? Well, she's constantly using it. Yeah. So again, I'm going to do it down here on this end. Make sure no fabric peeks out. And just get that little bit of battleizer. It's going to be bulky in our seams. Get it out. So you can see how that very easily trimmed that curved edge, even though it's a straight ruler. That's kind of amazing. Yeah. So Gail then, says it was easier than she thought. It, it really is pretty easy. And I'm telling you that sometimes when you grab a scissors, you just run the risk so much of cutting something you don't want to cut. Mm -hmm. Our next step is to use the ruler side, not the metal side, but the ruler side of our trimmer by George. And we're going to line the quarter inch mark up with that basting stitch. And we're going to trim a quart the fabric a quarter of an inch all the way around. You can trim it from this side, or if it's easier for you to see things, you can trim it from this side as well. So I'll do it both ways. So I have my quarter inch mark on my ruler lined up with that basting stitch. Oh, Sarah, we need a blade change, baby. <laughs> it's your birthday. I'm going to get you a new blade for your birthday. <laughs> She's gonna, like, oh, yay. <laughs> oh, yay. Yippee. 
So here's our basting stitch and our ruler lining the quarter inch mark up with that. And there we go. A couple more sides. We'll save that special curved edge for last. Okay, and we're going to use the same kind of thing with the quarter inch mark. You could use the scissors here safely if you'd rather do that. Um, but it's just as easy if you use your ruler. I've aligned the quarter inch mark with the basting stitch there. So I'm going to cut that away and I'm going to turn it as I go. And one more time over here. The cool thing too is if it's not a perfect quarter inch, you're actually going to be pinning your basting stitch to the basting stitch of the adjoining block. So just something to keep in mind. So there it is. There Voila. is. This is the block we stitched yesterday. This is a block that would match it. I figure out which way it goes. I did this before too and had had a hard time. Well, I grabbed it from you too. You did. Now Sorry. what did I do? <laughs> Somebody help me with my puzzle piece here. I think it goes like like that. <laughs> Why was that so hard? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the easy thing is if you do a light, medium, and dark and not all the same fabric, you're going to have your light and dark fabric in the right place that helps you find where home is for you a little easier. So now what we're going to do is we are, I'm going to show you our pinning technique. And basically we need to figure out where our match points are on here. Our match points are always our corners. Another match point is where, where these satin stitches meet. And also we want to make sure that this basting stitch lines up with the basting stitch on the other block. So I'm going to go ahead and put these right sides together. I am going to take my first pin. We do use what we call anchor pins. And our anchor pin is going to go straight through where that match point is on one block. And then it's going to go through the same spot on the other block. So our corners are always a match point. And we're going to leave that pin right straight through there. But we are not bringing this pin back through. We're going to take another pin and put it right next to it. This is our pin we're going to leave in there. We're going to put that through the seam allowance. It's through the seam allowance, so just two pieces of fabric. And then we can put the second pin back through the block. That helps keep it from shifting this way, and it keeps those basting stitches matched up. So now I can remove my anchor pin, and I can use it for the next match point. I'm, I always go for the corners first. So I'm going to find the corner over here. I like to check it on the front, and then I'm going to put, you see there's a little satin stitch there in the corner, and that little satin stitch is what fills in the satin stitch on the circle. So there's my anchor pin. Now I'm going to take another pin and put it just through the seam allowance, not through all the battle lights or anything. So this second pin just through the seam allowance, and then back through the block, and then you can remove that anchor pin. So another match spot was where these satin stitches are. I'm going to put my anchor pin right to the left side of that satin stitch. So where the basting stitch and the left side of that satin stitch meet, that's my next match point. And I'm also going to pull it apart and I'm going to make sure I need to make a little adjustment. The block behind it, I'm putting it in the same place. So to the left of the satin stitch and also right where the basting stitch is. This helps keep everything aligned, um, going every which way. So next to the anchor pin, again, one more time, my second permanent pin is going to go through the seam allowance, only just two pieces of fabric, and then back through the block. And at this point, remove the anchor pin and um, put as many pins in there as you feel comfortable doing. I usually like to go a few inches apart like I did here. And then the next thing you do is when you go over to your machine, I'm going to actually mark on here with my friction pen exactly where you're going to sew because sometimes it's hard to see on camera. So let me do that for you. You're going to sew right on that basting stitch. I like to start about a quarter of an inch in and then do a backspace and then go forward. 
Okay, I'm just trying to, uh, this is terrible coloring I'm doing, but it'll give you the idea of where exactly you are going to do your stitching, which is right on that basting stitch. There, so you'll sew right there, and then you can open it up after it's sewn together. I'm not going to sew this together, but then you open it up, and I always press um, my seams in one row. I go one direction, then row next to it, I will press the other direction. Then when you sew those rows together, they just kind of line up and sit together really nicely. So that's how you pin. That's where you sew. Sew all your rows together. Are your blocks into rows and your rows into a quilt? And put this stuff aside over here. Lock in the rotary cutter so Aubrey doesn't cut herself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is one that I showed everybody yesterday. So I know you can only see part of it, but that's okay. It's big. And basically, this is going to be lined, and this is the reason why you're trimming your curved edge as well, because we're not backing it and binding it. We're just putting a lining on it. It's a lot quicker, and it's just as beautiful. So what you're going to do after you get all your rows and everything sewn together is you're going to take your backing or your lining fabric, which is this green, you're going to put it right side up on your cutting table. You can see that this is the wrong side, so it's right side up. And then you're going to take your quilted piece and lay it right sides together or right side down. And then you're going to take safety pins and take the safety pins and just pin it everywhere throughout the block. Um, and then the next step you're going to do is you are going to sew right along here. So right on top of that basting stitch, you're going to sew all the way around it, but leave like a five inch opening. So I started, let me see where they are. What I did is I started here. I already have this sewn. I started sewing here. I went all the way around. And sometimes I've been known to keep going to the point where I can't turn it because I didn't leave an opening. So just to help me, what I always do is I always just put two pins where I want to stop. That way I know. I usually have a pin periodically around here, but I'll put two pins where I want to stop. So I started here and stopped here. This is my opening. And then after that, I'm going to take these out now. After that, what you need to do is, oh, I didn't bring scissors. Do we have a hoop scissors tucked away in here somewhere? I'm sure we do somewhere. Okay. Well, I might have to just tell you what to do next. Here. Okay, okay perfect. Um, Aubrey just handed me our hoop scissors. You're going to take your scissors and you are, and you can use a rotary cutter ruler if you want. Use that same technique I showed you on how to use a trimmer by George on a curve. But at this point, it's okay just to use the scissors. And you are going to trim your lining fabric right up to the edge, raw edge of the of your quilted piece. And I only have a little bit more to go here. I started a little bit in advance. So we're going to go snip, snip, snip. And then the other thing you're going to do is you're going to like clip. It's good to clip the curves so that it lays nice and flat. Well, that blade's better than your rotary. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Could you there. use pinking shears for... Cut, yes. Cutting the lining. Yes, absolutely. You can use pinking shears. I'm almost there, and then I'm going to show you how I clipped the corners. If you don't clip the corners, you may have a little bit of bulk that's just kind of laying inside your seam, and it won't make it lay nice and flat. So I will show you how I clipped them. I guess I'm not going to be able to turn this unless I take those last few safety pins out as well. Okay, so we are back at the beginning. Throw this over here. <laughs> it just <laughs> fell on the floor, that's why Aubrey's laughing. 
So you can see right here, I have these little curved edges and little triangles or clips taken out of them. Um, and that is what's going to help it lay nice and flat. So all you have to do is do a little clip there and a little clip there. My only warning is don't cut that seam. Just cut right up to the battleizer. You don't have to cut into that part. But you will do that all the way around. Let me take out my safety pins. And then I'm going to, then you just turn it, press it, and top stitch it, and you are finished. So, Aubrey, if you have, do you have any slides or information to oh, show? Oh, yeah, them? but somebody okay. asked about the scissors. Okay. Um, so, Kimmy, it looks like you had a question on the scissors, so I wanted to put this over here. Let me grab this one, too. Um, we are, she use, she's using our hoop scissors, and what's great about the hoop scissors is that offset handle. Can you see this right here? That offset handle allows you to trim things very easily well in the hoop. And then they also have a really nice point to them too. So we have just the regular size and we also have a little mini size. Nice for applique. Oh my gosh, this is the best scissors for applique. I'm gonna take a little, it's so sharp they put little tip protectors on them. Mm -hmm. But very super thin blades, you can get nice and close to your applique. And the offset handle is great for getting inside the hoop. And then Aubrey's wanting me to show the She asked the George. name again of that. Yep. So that's our Trimmer by George 3.0. I did see Nina has dropped the order link. So all of those things are at that order link, including we also have on top of the scissors and the trimmer, we also have the battleizer which is, this is the five yard size batting and stabilizer in the design. So all of the things that we've been using are at the link that Nina just dropped. Um, so Diane, none of us here in the office are lefties, but I do know this has happened before where we have lefties in the comments who do have them and say they're great. So if that's you, if you're a lefty, you've already used them. Don't take it from us, take it from an actual lefty. <laughs> yeah, so if that's you, let her know, guys. Um, let's see what else. Okay, I'm going to keep rolling. So right now what I'm going to do is this is going to be kind of a recap. So if you dropped a number five earlier, might want to pay attention to this part because the number five meant you might have missed yesterday. <laughs> so you've seen the design now. Um, Annie's also just shown you how to trim it, pin it, and line it, which is very nice. Um, yes, there is a USB for this project, Pat. There's also a download. You can pick either of them, whatever works for you. But um, if you go to the order link, I'll have Nina drop that order link again, and you create your own bundle, which just easily means you put two things that you want from the category that the link is. So it is um, Sunflower Table Topper category has two pages in it. And if you just pick two of the things that are in there um, and add them to your cart, two fun things happen. First of all, it's automatically going to take 10% off your order. Second, it is going to pop a bonus in. Um, and Annie's, can you guys hear her clipping away? She's, clipping. she's like, I'm going to get this cart. thing done. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to take it to the, the pop-up shop at, in Woodstock, Illinois. There weekend. you go. There you go. Um Oh, Bonita, that's funny. She said she's a lefty, but she cuts righty. Wow, so you're ambidextrous. Um, so anyways, you pick two items from the category in the link that Nina just dropped, and it'll take 10% off and pop the bonus into your cart as well. Now, that does have some things I need to warn you about. Number one, it's going away tonight at midnight. So that promo expires tonight, August 6th at midnight Eastern time, okay? Um, the other thing I need you to know is that there are three exclusions within that category. So three things that this will not apply to are the strip stick, which we didn't even use with this project yeah. because it's a table topper and we didn't put wool in it. OK, um, the other two items that will not apply are the mono poly invisible thread, which we used um, when joining the blocks together and the vanish light invisible thread. So those three things you can order. They just won't, won't uh, get you the 10% off or uh, the bonus. Okay. Um, all right. 
Here's the bonus. So I just told you if you have the two things and create your own bundle, it's going to uh, uh, add this automatically. And it's so cute. In fact, what a good time to stop and take a drink of my coffee <laughs> because I stole it. It's on my little mug right here. It would be cute to add your little table over here. Yes, it sure would. And then it's just got a little elastic so it'll fit all sorts of different sizes. So this is a bonus project that will pop into your cart automatically when you do this before midnight tonight. So it's a really nice time during the workshops. The workshops are great too, you guys. If you're new and you're like just trying to figure it out, you can totally just watch it, learn some. And I just saw someone said earlier too, mom, they said, I learn something new every time I watch <laughs> one of these. So, you know, you can definitely just hang out with us and watch the process. But if you're thinking about ordering, the best time to do it is during the workshop because you're going to save 10%. This bonus is going to pop in your cart automatically. So you will be totally taken care of. And I just saw a comment that said, Nina is a gem. She helped me with my order. Perfect. So she's your event concierge and she will take good care of you. So just to give you an example, why it's so awesome to order during the workshop, um, Annie just can't quit working. She's literally, oh, you can see her in the camera. She's well, cool. <laughs> she just keeps going. Um, so anyways, as an example, can you hand me those two things or put them right here even? Sure. This example shows if you got the design, and by the way, that can be designed by download or it can be the USB. And you get the five yards of battleizer because those are two things you're definitely going to need um, that's going to put the bonus in your cart for free. And it's going to give you 10% off, which is going to save you 22 buckaroos that's awesome. and some change. So that's the good thing about ordering during a workshop. The other thing that you could do, guys, is if you already have a bunch of battleizer, you could... Add one of these items. Maybe it's the trimmer for you. Maybe it's the scissor for you. And it will get you the bonus and the 10% off. If you're international, because we do have some international customers as well, and you don't want to mess with shipping. Shipping is expensive. Trust us. We know. Yeah. Um, it's just what they charge us, and it's crazy. So if you're international, you could get this design as a download. And I put some other designs in there by download as well. Um, I, think, I want to say there's a super duper cute fall banner in there that's a download. Um, we have another sunflower design. So go in there, play around, add things to the cart. It will automatically populate the best deal for you. And the other thing I love about our workshops is by the end of it, if you paid attention and registered mm -hmm. and you ordered during the workshop, you're really getting this coordinating yeah, cute which is set. So awesome. I yeah. love the table that you set. And I actually just destroyed it because I wanted to bring it up here. So you're welcome. I know. She said, I love it. And I look over and I'm like, you just, oh, I know. okay. I know. I took, I took the table runner out. That's okay. That's okay. I just wanted to talk, tell them yeah. before you do the giveaway about what the final step was. I, oh, yes. I did turn this. Let me get your, this. there you go. I did turn this and I haven't pressed it yet, but then you press it and then you're, you press it and then you, <laughs> you press it, it and then you press it <laughs> like it was off camera. You press it and then you top stitch it. So here's the edge of this one that's been top stitched that helps it lay nice and flat. So oh, that's the final step and it's done. And it's going to Illinois tomorrow morning. Awesome. Oh. Okay. So we do have a giveaway. The keyword is pin. So make sure to drop that in the comments. But before I draw that winner, I did want to again just mention that we have a real life wonderful customer service person who can help you if you're just kind of trying to figure out what the best deal is or something doesn't seem right in your cart, so on and so forth. Um, reach out to her directly. Her number and email are there on the screen and she will help you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's funny. I got to pop this in there. So another reason that we want it to be fall, right? Uh, Bonita says that Nina, as soon as it gets cooler, I'm going to send you some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to do that right now, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's funny. Super cute. Okay, so now we're going to do our giveaway. And if you guys have any questions... 
Um, now is a great time to ask them as we get wrapping up here. Um, and we're going to do this giveaway quick. And whoever wins is going to get $50 in Hoop Sisters store credit so that you can go shopping, which is not a bad deal at all. Not at all. Um, and I also just want to quickly just remind you guys that all the th promos and things that we talked about today end at midnight. Mm -hmm. So don't let it expire on you. Sharon Blank okay. over watching on YouTube. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. So Sharon, what you're going to want to do, because we can't keep anything straight, so we got to make sure you... <laughs> We're putting it on you. <laughs> when I say we, I mean me, really. Um, make sure that you email Nina at that email address within five business days, and we'll get your store credit mm -hmm. added to your account for you. So congratulations. And then Nina, if you wouldn't mind also dropping those order links one more time so that if you want to go over and shop around, you can do that. So if you're near Woodstock, Illinois, be sure to stop out Friday and Saturday, see the girls, see the pop-up shop, support Sewing Concepts in their 35th anniversary. If you're in Ohio and you're not going to Illinois, come out and see me. We are part of the Shop Hop Monday through Friday, 10 to 5, and you can see some samples in person. And if you're nowhere near us at all, join us again for the next yeah. workshop. It's coming up soon. Um, we'll put some information out about that. But right now, I'm feeling fall. I know. It's starting. Yeah. I'm not quite feeling fall. I'm feeling late summer, but not me. I'm over the heat. Uh, September 1st, though, I'm mean, yeah. fall. Yeah, okay. well, it's, that's coming. It is coming. That's like a coming. Great train. <laughs> All right, you all. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yep, Go shopping. Thanks. Get yourself something cute, and we'll see you next yep, time. See you next time.